Would you stand up on your feet with me for just one second? Come on, let's stand up and make a declaration of our faith. Let's go old school for a moment. If you have a Bible on you, go ahead and grab your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, steal your neighbors. And if you don't have that, use your cell phone. And somebody just say this out loud. Somebody say, this is my Bible. It is the Word of God. It's a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Uh, today I have this Word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Today I hear and I grow in Jesus' mighty name. Now, come on, turn to your neighbor, tell him you look like you've been working out. Just lie to him if you have to. Amen. You can be seated today in the house of God. Hey, it's good to be here with you. Jessie sends her love. She's preaching this morning in Owensboro. Me and Justice came last night. She's preaching this morning. Then she brings the girls. She'll be here tonight. But she and I are going to be teaching live together next week. And uh, if you want to see how our family operates, you watch us teach live. So sometimes we, we have fun. We laugh at each other. And sometimes we even fight each other on stage. So bring somebody with you this, this next Sunday morning. And I want to go ahead and entitle the message that I'm going to preach in the series we're going into. And uh, I want to call it Insta Ham. Everybody say Insta Ham. Come on, how to kill the swine in your social media life. Somebody say amen to that. And I was thinking back whenever I got this title, I was thinking about it. I was thinking about when I first got my Instagram account. Let me do a little poll of the crowd. How many Facebookers or Facebook account people do I have out there? Let me see your hand. All right, I got you. How many Instagrammers do I have out there that's growing in popularity? How many Snapchatters are there out there? I'm not in that. Snapchats of the devil, that's all I'm saying, but y'all are in that. Uh, how many Twitter folk are out there? Twitter's kind of losing. It's a political medium. Everybody's eating its lunch now. But uh, I was an uh, early adopter of Twitter. I'm just kidding about Snapchat. Not really. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. You'll find out later, right? Um, here's what I'll say about Instaham. I, was, I got an Instagram account, and I, I posted for a while. Then I kind of gave it up for a little while. And uh, I was sitting in my car one day, and, and, and how many of y'all have used your cell phone to entertain your children? I mean, you older people had to parent your children. Now we have cell phones for that, right? We just, we just hand the cell phone to them. So uh, you guys are tougher than us. But my, my daughter's in the back. I hand her my cell phone. She's supposed to be playing a game, but how many know kids wander from app to app if you don't watch them? And all of a sudden, my phone rings, and uh, Briley's like, Dad, it, it's somebody from the church. Would you answer it? And I took it, and I answered it, and they said, Pastor, what are you doing right now? I said, well, I'm sitting in the car right now hanging out. I said, by any chance, did Briley Gibson just have your phone? I said, yeah, Bradley's been in the back playing with my phone. He said, man, you need to get on Instagram and go to your Instagram account because Bradley's been scrolling down the line and liking the pictures of all the young girls, girls at the pool from the church, all kinds of stuff like that. She's going to get you killed and ran out of town, man. And I'm like, holy moly. I'm like, Bradley, give me that, give me that. And I go to fixing it really fast, right, because I didn't want to pick a new city to preach in. And uh, how many of you know your kids can get you in trouble with that digital device? Somebody say amen. you got to watch them with it. And I realized that that social media thing, even though I wasn't a part of it right then, how many know it can make a pig out of you pretty fast if you don't watch it? Come on, somebody. It can do it if somebody hacks your account or has your account or your kids are on your account. But how many know you can make a pig out of yourself just as fast as they can, right? See, here's the deal. The world has one spirit, and we, the church, have another spirit. There's the spirit of the world, and then there's the spirit of the word. And we have to watch what spirit is controlling us. See, a pig in the Bible is a symbol of something unclean, something dirty, something filthy. How many of y'all grew up, anybody grew up around pigs out there, hogs out there? Come on, you blessed people. I know you're out there. We're in Texas. I did in Kentucky. And uh, I'm telling you, it's a nasty animal, but I like it on my plate with some scrambled eggs. You know, that's where I like my pig. I like them on my plate, not around. And here's the deal about a pig. If you look up about a pig and the Jews in the book of Leviticus, a pig was called the most unclean thing in the world. The Jews were forbidden to eat pork because they didn't want that uncleanness in their life. If you look in the New Testament, when Jesus cast the devil out of the, the Gadarene demoniac, where do those devils go? They go into a herd of pigs that were really there in an unlawful manner, shouldn't even been in the region according to Levitical law. You know, the Bible talks about a woman without discretion. And it likens her to a jewel and a pig's snout. They're talking about un how unclean a pig was through the, the eyes of the Bible. You know, whenever the Romans sacked Jerusalem in 70 A.D., 
the Roman general, to defile the temple and to smack the Jews in the face. He took a pig into the altar, the Holy of Holies, and he sacrificed it there because he knew it was the biggest smack you could ever put on a Jew. All I'm saying is being a pig or a ham in the Bible is not a good thing. Look at your neighbor and say, don't be a pig. Just tell them that this morning, right? So how do we operate in social media and not let social media get the best of us? How many of y'all agree with me social media is not going away, but it's getting more of the market all the time? You know, there's one billion Facebook users on the planet. A hundred million of them are active every month. Instagram numbers are growing astronomically. There'll be more applications that come up. This thing has changed the way we interact as humans. Used to, I I flew in the airport used to, uh, and used to 15 years ago, you get in the airport, and I'm telling you, you sit down by somebody, you start the conversation, right? How are you doing? Fine. Where are you from? Kentucky. These these are what guys ask each other. What do you do for a living? Well, I'm a preacher. And then they quit talking to me, so I quit telling them that. (laughs) Now, I'll just lie to him. What do you do? I'm a, I'm a chemical engineer. How are you today? You know, because so I can sneak in there. You know, I don't tell him that. Eh, maybe I do. But anyway, you'll never know, will you? Um, here, here, here's the deal. Used to, we talk to one another. Now, what do we do when we're seated by somebody we don't know? Come on. But look down right here. You know what I do so I don't have to talk to people in the airport sometime? I put my beats on so they can't hear me. And then so they don't know I've made eye contact with them, I put my sunglasses on like I'm crazy. And I, I sit there where I can't see them, can't hear them. Why? Because social media has trained me to look down instead of look up. How many of y'all think Jesus wants us to look up at people instead of look down at ourselves? Somebody give the Lord a hand clap if you believe that. How do we, how do we stop this thing from messing us up? See, it's got a way of bringing out the pig in us all. So I don't think the answer is to run from it. I understand if you ran from it to get some peace. How many of y'all have ever laid it all down for a period of time? It's like, I can't take it anymore. It has stolen my peace. And that's okay for a period. But I don't think the church's response should be to run from one of the greatest technologies that have ever been made in the history of humanity. We ought not run from technology. We ought to adopt technology. Whatever industry leaders, the earliest adopters of new technology always win in whatever industry they're in. You've got to be an early adopter. But we got to learn to use the technology and not let the technology use us. I want you to open up your Bibles to John chapter 17. I'll show you what I think one of the keys in not being a ham is. John chapter 17, the words of Jesus always win, verses 14 through 16. Here's what Jesus said about operating in a fallen system, but being different than the system. He said this, I've given them your word. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Everybody say, I'm not of the world. Verse 15, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Jesus said that the followers are not of the world. We're not of the spirit of the world. We're not of the world system. We don't operate according to the world's principles. We operate according to the principles of Jesus. And he said, I'm not praying that you should take them out of the world. Jesus' plan was to leave us in a broken, fallen, filthy world. See, a lot of people think, and even the church has had a theology throughout history, that if some things are evil, what we need to do is we need to leave all the evil, and we need to go as far away from it as we can, and we need to create a safe little environment where everything's perfect and we'll be our own little community away from the evils of the world. So what these people did to get out of the world is they began to isolate themselves. But Jesus didn't say that we should isolate ourselves like the Amish or like the Mennonites or like the monks of the first or second century. He said you don't isolate yourself. He said I'm not praying that you take them out of the world. I'm praying that you keep them in the world but they'll be different than the world. He said we're not to be isolated. We're to be in the center of the world and to be insulated from the world what's the difference in being isolated and insulated the isolated thing is by itself the insulated thing is right in the midst of the trauma and the trouble but there's an insulation around it that keeps what's on the world from getting inside of it come on we're not going to be isolated as a church we're going to be insulated as a church we're going to live in the midst of the darkness but we're going to be lighter than any dark that comes in our our way come on the light shines into the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it somebody give Jesus a hand clap a strong one do you believe his light overcomes the darkness 
It's been said like this for years. We're in the world, but we're not what, church? Come on, say I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. But I notice this world still pulls on us, doesn't it? There's two sides of us. There's the flesh, but there's the spirit. There's the spirit, but there's the flesh. The spirit is the part of me that smiles and says, God bless you. The flesh is the part of me that screams at you when you cut me off in traffic, right? I don't do that where I preach. I do that in other cities. Here I'm like, God bless you. Throw holy water on you. I'm for you, right? That's the spirit in me. And those two are at war with one another, aren't they? The flesh is fighting the spirit. The spirit is fighting the flesh. What I feed will win. I promise you it will. It's like having two dogs that are going to get into a fight. If you don't feed one of them for a week, the other one is a guaranteed winner every time. Watch what you feed. It changes you. See, social media has a way of feeding the pig inside of us. And the pig inside of us then starts getting louder and louder. I notice it does in me. Here's some things I've noticed about a pig, the unclean thing, the, the kind of noise that a pig makes. Y'all know what kind of noise a pig makes, don't you? You know, you got that pig noise. Y'all roll that pig noise back there. It's kind of, this kind of noise comes up out of you sometimes when you're on social media. You know what I mean? Comes out in me. And, uh, right there, that's beautiful. And then, if you like that, have, have just meditate on that all day long. But um, here's the deal about a pig noise. It, it, it can kind of come up out of you when you hear the pig on the inside of me when I'm scrolling. I got to learn to put that pig under my feet and let the spirit speak out of me. Here's what pigs like to do. I've been around pigs. Number one, pigs will eat whatever is in front of them. You ever see some people eating some stuff they shouldn't be eating on social media? They buy a lot of stuff that's written that they shouldn't be buying on social media. Come on, somebody. The, the, The stuff that's out there. You get caught in a political debate you never even dreamed about getting involved in. But that pig kind of just hops out. How many of you ever had a political discussion on social media where the person on the other side of the discussion at the end was like, you know what, you're right. I've come over to your opinion and I give up. You win. You're the smartest person in the universe. Said no one ever, right? It's just a fight. It's just, it's just eating the slop. Some people love the gossip on social media. I've watched it. I've known of some churches that had trouble before they had problems in the church. Now, it's never happened here, but I heard there was another church in Amarillo that had problems once upon a time. And uh, used to church problems, people get into it or didn't like this or that in church. That was around for a week or two, and then it was gone, right? It was over. But how many know now the problems in life can be perpetuated? by people that let the swine get the best of them on social media, right? So they keep bringing up and bringing up and bringing up and they keep tearing scabs off that should already be healed. It's making it harder to forgive and let things go. There's some things I've been forgiving people for years now just because it keeps coming up and coming up. But how many know forgiveness isn't a feeling? Forgiveness is a choice, so we forgive by faith and we move on. If you can't take it, put the phone down. Somebody say amen to that. See, they eat whatever's in front of them. They Pigs, they roll in the mud. If you just get in the mud and you keep rolling in it, that's letting the swine, the ham, the insta ham, get the best out of you, right? It's getting the best out of you if you keep going back and rolling in the same issues. Pig gets down there and rolls and buries in. It's more comfortable in the mud than they are anywhere else. And some people, you just got to turn them off because they're going to be a pig forever. Some grown men living in their mama's basement in footy pajamas. Come on. They're playing, playing video games and eating chips and crying at night themselves to sleep. Those, those keyboard commandos that are going to roll in the mud. Don't let them pull you down with them. Come on. The smallest size is to criticize. The smallest size is to go after people and troll that are great people. Just ignore them and go on. We're not going to live like a pig. We're not going to live in the flesh. We're going to live in the spirit. Come on, somebody. And we're going to fly higher than the mud. Give the Lord a real hand clap if you want to fly higher. I'm going to fly higher in life than the mud. Amen? Here's what pigs do. Pigs will cut the legs out from under you. They knock people down like that. I remember being a kid. I was raised, I was raised in a barn, literally. I was raised in a barn. Jesse and I got married. And like, I ate lunch and supper lots of times standing in the stockyards with manure all over the alleys, cattle all around me. I'm just out there eating eating food like it doesn't bother me at all. Jesse and I got married. I I got her a lunch and took her over to the stockyard. She's looking at that lunch. She's looking around in the stockyard office. She's looking at me. My dad walked in and said, "Uh, Brian, do you ever think maybe that girl doesn't eat in a stockyards every day of her life? I'm like, no, I just just thought everybody ate in stockyards, you know. I'd gotten acclimated to that and it, it, it it got into me. 
But the, uh, the, the older guys would tell us when pigs are around, you know, when you're a kid, don't let that pig get you down. They'll cut the legs out of you, under you, hit you. You know, they're, they're fast moving, pigs are. And they'll take the knees out, get you on the ground. You're in trouble if, if a pig gets you down. Listen, here's the deal. That phone that you have in your pocket, it'll get you down if you let it. Scientists say right now that this was in psychology today. The average person is now interrupted by their smartphone 85 times a day. 85 times a day. And there's a recovery time that you have to get every time that thing, that thing takes your legs out and takes you down. Listen, we don't want to be cut down. We don't want to be ineffective. We want to be effective as use, humans. Let's use the technology but not let the technology use us. So how do I take the pig in me out back and kill it? It's pastoral teaching I want to do for about the next 10 minutes. How do I take the pig in me out back and kill it? Number one, I think you got to realize that you are a patriarch. Come on, you ought to write that down for taking notes today. Patriarch. The term they have for us in a digital era is that we are now digital patriarchs. Who are patriarchs? They're the head of families. Abraham was the patriarch over the nation of Israel. Uh, you think about great patriarchs in the Bible. You got Abraham, you got Isaac, you got Jacob. Well, there's a new type of patriarch right now, and it's us. And they call us digital patriarchs. Think about this. There will be more information about us available to our bloodline after us than has ever been before in the history of humanity. You know, I don't know a lot about my great-granddad. I know his name. I know he was a tall man. He was like close to seven foot tall. I don't know what happened to me. This is what happens when people keep breeding to very short people. You get this at the end. But I had a very tall granddad. And uh, I know he was kind of a rounder. He ran a card game in Providence, Kentucky, kind of a professional gambler type. I know he gambled away the farm. He lost the farm at night playing poker. They'd get together and they'd play for farms. How many know that's when you're, you're, you're committed? You're in it to win it then. And uh, he won a guy's farm, felt sorry for him, gave it back. And then they played for farms later. And the same guy won his farm and wouldn't give it back. What's the lesson? Collect on your bets is the lesson today. Somebody say amen to that. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, but he, went, he died broke. He had a heart attack in front of my father, died broke, left his wife without any money. He had a drinking problem too, and uh, his wife was a good enough trader. By the time she died, she'd fed herself in her 70s and had gathered together about 250,000 painting paintings and trading junk. A lot of times our women are better than our men. Somebody say amen to that. But, but that's all I know about my granddad, great-granddad. I know nothing more than that. So I don't know much about my great-granddad, but my great-grandchildren will know a lot about me. I don't know much about my great-granddad, but our great-grandchildren will know a lot about us. It's your neighbor and say, watch out. Just tell them that, huh? Every time we get on this phone, there is a digital trail of what we've looked at. Every time we travel through our city, even if you turn that phone off and take the SIM card out, it knows where you've been. Everything you post is recorded in the cloud. It's children and young people, Snapchat pictures do not go away. I promise you there's a record of them out there somewhere on the internet. Every exchange we add on social media, good and bad, it will be recorded. Everything we viewed on a video player uh, attached to one of our IP addresses will be following us around into eternity. And I promise you, everything we have in our bank accounts and everything we spent, our great-grandchildren will know it. You know, every video we played, that's scaring people in the room right now. Because some of you have looked at, at kitten videos, and you're embarrassed that you've seen those kitten videos, you know, that are ridiculous. No, there's other videos that are you getting nervous about watching right now. Why? Because that's going to be out there. And I promise you, whenever historians start looking at our lives, and your kids start searching for that, in a couple generations, nobody's going to care about your privacy, and they're going to know everything about us. We're digital patriarchs. How many of you want to leave the right kind of legacy instead of the wrong kind of legacy? You know, I know it's not perfect today. You know, you might be sitting there thinking, man, there's no telling what my kids and grandkids are going to find out. How about you make a clean break today and clean it up from this point forward? Come on, somebody give God a hand clap. We can always repent. We can always change. We can always kill the pig on the inside of us. The Bible says one generation should declare to the next the wonderful works of God. See, the next thing I think we got to watch if we're going to kill the pig in us is we have to watch our passions. 
The Bible says in Proverbs 29, 11, a fool vents all his feelings. Let's say that out loud. A fool vents all his feelings. Let's say it again. A fool vents all his feelings. You ever had people say things like, man, you got to let all that out. Don't keep it bottled up. It'll kill you. That's the worst information anybody could ever give you. How many of you let it all out? Nobody will like you, right? You can't get that stuff back. You ever said stuff in a heated moment you wish you didn't say, right? You're trying to grab it back right now. And you're like, oh, my God, did I say that out loud? I think I did, and everybody heard it, you know. What happened to you? Your passion got the best of you. Now, I'm telling you, the way your brain interacts with what's going on on that screen and the way there's a separation from you and the person, you ever seen people get real bold and crazy when they're typing on a phone or when there's a screen between them and you? But then whenever you're face-to-face... Everything changes, doesn't it? Right, because now you know they're within distance to reach out and touch me, right? It's all different now. The game just changed. Well, see, you don't know where the passion level is when you're doing it on a screen. So you got to watch it. You can't let that passion take you in a direction you're going to regret. Here's the deal. People post stuff before they, they, they process it in their think, in their thinking. So I would say this. I think you ought to. Here's a great hashtag. that Don't post before you process. Come on, somebody. Let's say that out loud. Don't post before I process. And I watch people get so impassioned about things that don't matter. It's like it's something in the news cycle. It'll be gone in 24 hours. And most of it's spent anyway in the news cycle to keep you from looking over here. How many of you recognize that now? And they don't care in the news cycle. They don't care about the truth. They care about controlling the narrative. Both the conservatives and the liberals, that's all they do. They control the narrative to keep it on their side of the ball. Somebody say amen to that. So you can get tore up about something in the news cycle. You get impassioned. You're going crazy. You're tearing your hair out. You're rending your garments. You're burning down buildings, you know. You're protesting and running down the streets. And it's like it's going to be gone in 24 minutes. And here's the, here's the question I have. If you're so passionate about that issue on the Internet, have you Christian? Have you passionately witnessed Jesus or talked to the lost or invited somebody to church or prayed for the sick that passionately in in years? Have you been as passionate about the cause of Christ as you have about the last Instagram battle? Are you as passionate about the truth of the word of God as you are about the Facebook fight? Come on, somebody. Let's be passionate about what matters. Let's be passionate about the word of God. Let's be passionate about his spirit. Let's be passionate about truth. Instead of just social media, we got to get our passion in the right place. Amen. Now I want to close with this. Here's one of the last things I think that we do to kill the pig inside of us. Next week, we're going to talk about the science of how it affects you and and just a lot of interesting stuff that will help you. This isn't going away. We're going to talk about how it's affecting kids. Some of the biggest people, the way their lives are getting changed are teenagers. It's totally changing the way they process information, the way they view themselves and others. But I think instead of throwing it away, I know I've been negative about a lot of it today. I see it as a powerful tool. Come on, there's power in any new communication. It's powerful. And we can get knowledge out quicker than we ever have before. But here's the deal. You can run away from something or you can redeem it. So the early church, and sometimes the church has done this throughout church history. I like church history. I had a church history minor when I went through college. But but many times in the history of the church, God created something awesome, then the devil perverts it, and the church will run from it as though it's evil. That's not the system that we should use. The system should be like this. God creates something awesome, the devil perverts it, but we redeem it. Use it for the glory of God. Think about all of our lives. God created me to do do his plan, to do his will. The devil came in and messed my life up, and he did it to many of yours. I became became a meth amp junkie. And you know what God did? Instead of throwing me aside and running from me, he came back into my life, and he redeemed me. Come on, give God a hand clap for his redeeming power in your life. I'm thankful for it in my life. He's a redeeming God. And you know, the church did this. How many of you were raised in a church? Some of you will show how old school, uh, you know, your church was. But how many of you were raised in a church where the movies were the devil? Was anybody raised in a church out there where the movie, you know, Bobby Boucher, that's the devil, right? When they're talking about, talking about the movies, right? Let me see your hands high. I want to see you, you guys. I'll have to watch y'all. You know what I mean? Y'all will be mad about something I preached before long. Y'all are old school. But no, nah, I'm kidding. Here, here's, here's the deal. They, they, they taught, the church taught forever that movies were the devil. You know who swings the big bad in influence in America now? 
It's Hollywood, isn't it? It's the movies. Everybody say the movies. Media, whatever you want to call it. And I'm telling you, they don't have the answer to the world's problems. Every time you turn on the news, one of them have dropped dead of an overdose. One of them is divorcing their wife and getting married again. They're losing their mind. They're a part of cults here and there. How many know Hollywood does not have the answer, but church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have the answer. And what we should have done instead of running from the movies is we should have redeemed it. We should have got our dog in that fight early on instead of handing it on. Because it's easier to get on top of the mountain when the mountain's being built than to knock somebody else off the top of the mountain. It's easier like that. I have a good friend, Pastor David and Carrie and I, we were there with him this last week in Louisville. Dr. Bob Rogers is a friend of mine, influenced me greatly in the area of prayer and fasting, and I've traveled around the world with him some. But uh, he, he's almost 70 years old now, he's built a great church, but his dad was that kind of preacher, the movies are evil. And he said he never went to a movie until he went to school at ORU in Tulsa. Some of his friends were going to a movie. And he said in the movie, he knew the movie was evil. He's in that movie. He knew he wasn't supposed to be there. And he said he knew if Jesus came back right then, he would go straight to hell. And so while they were opening the credits, he's there praying. He's like, Jesus, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Please don't come back. Don't send me to hell. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. It's like, that's all I could think about. And I'm there praying. And he said, while I was there praying, the greatest evangelist, maybe in the history of humanity up to that point, came walking down the aisle, Dr. T.L. Osborne, preached the gospel face-to-face than more human than ever lived other than later Reinhard Bonnke came on the scene. And he said he's sitting there thinking he's going to go to hell for being in this movie, and here comes Dr. T.L. Osborne walking down the aisle. And he's like, well, praise the Lord. If it's good enough for Dr. T.L. Osborne, it's good enough for me. See, <laughs> Pastor Bob thought he'd go to hell for the movie, but Dr. T.L. already knew that he could take that movie and redeem it. Yes. Come on, somebody. Same thing happened in the financial sector in America. Christians built this nation at the beginning. The the foundation, the constitution of this nation, written and signed by preachers. The the, the preachers, the men of God are the guys that fought for the the early settlement of America and the declaration of independence and getting us broke free from the Brits. And it it was all born again Christian people, at least Christian worldview people. And what happened is they had the wrong idea about banking. There's something in the New Testament that says that usurers shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And they thought it was any banking, but it wasn't. The term usurer means someone who charges excessive interest. It's loan shark money is what it is. It's like a loan shark or a credit card company. They, you probably call them users. Get up around 20%. Somebody say amen to that. It's excessive, right? It's taking advantage of people that don't know what they're doing. And so the Christians took most of the banking and they took it to the Jewish community. They said, we don't want to touch this, but why don't you touch it for us? And the Jews were smart enough to read the blessing of Abraham to know that God's blessing meant you will lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And they had a redeemed mindset. They weren't perfect. They didn't even know Jesus was the Messiah. Now I love the Jewish people. I go to Israel. I love the nation of Israel. But what we did as the church is we took something that could have financed the gospel at the highest level in the earth and we handed it over to the Jewish community that didn't receive Messiah. How many of you think it would have been smarter for us to keep the banks and to control Wall Street and the Christians to have the guys right down there on that street in in the middle of New York City? Somebody say amen to that. Instead of throwing it away, you redeem it. What I want us to do is I want us to redeem our social media life. Somebody say amen to that. We ought to redeem our social media life. How do we redeem our social media life? And I know many of you do this already. It's like this. Stay out of a Facebook fight. Look at your neighbor and just say, don't take the bait. Just tell them, don't take the bait. Don't take it. Learn to shake it off, right? How many of every fight is not our fight? Every issue is not our issue. I got some friends that are the nicest guys on earth when you're face to face with them. But I'm telling you what, when you see them on social media, it's like, dude, you're like a rabid lunatic on social media. Why is it like that? It's like, you just gotta, you gotta cool your jets. You gotta wait. Some people need like a three key nuclear system before they could post. It's like your mom, your grandma, and your pastor should all be in agreement before you could hit that button post, right? Because you're just messing yourself up. So let, let's redeem it. Second thing is let's watch what we take in through any of those platforms. Look at your neighbor and tell them this. Say, say, don't eat the trash. Don't eat the trash. Tell them that. Come on, you are what you eat. You don't want to be a pig. A pig will eat anything, right? Don't eat the trash. The third thing I think we ought to do is we ought to take our social media and we ought to use it 
to elevate the church and the Lord Jesus Christ as high as we could possibly elevate it. We ought to take it and use it as a platform. Come on. To, to be positive and to preach Jesus and to invite people to the house of God. You know, to, to take it into push and to post things that are going to help. And I'll tell you what, if it's not positive and it's not, it doesn't bring laughter and it doesn't bring joy, I don't want to post it. There's already enough negative material out there. I think people need encouragement. People need something positive. People need something that will give them a merry heart. It does good like a medicine. Let's not be the problem. Let's be the answer. Let's not be the problem. Let's be the answer. Let's not be the problem. Let's be the answer. Amen. I want to give you an action step right now. Something you can do right now. I hate preaching with no action step. So here's what I think we ought to do. You ought to get out your phone. Get out your social media device if you have it on you right now. Pull it out right now. If you got a Facebook account, go to Victory Church's page. There's like a one minute shareable clip from this sermon. There's a one minute shareable clip from this sermon. Now I want you to take it and invite somebody, somebody back next week. There's something about people coming to our church. It's called a barrier of entry. Most people have a barrier of entry before they walk into a church building. If you haven't been in somewhere, how many get nervous when you go somewhere the first time? I still do at times. It doesn't even make sense. It's like I'm not, I'm not a nervous kind of guy. And I'm like walking into somewhere and it feels weird to me. It's a barrier of entry. People have this with our churches. And they might drive by it. They might see billboards. They might see that. But the more they see something or the more they can see into somewhere before they go there, it takes down that barrier of entry. When we post and they can see what a church is like, before they ever come inside, they're more likely to come. I'm telling you, God wants to use you to invite people, to win people to church and Jesus and to the house of God. Somebody say amen to that. So just share it right there and invite them back for week two. You could write, hey, don't you come sit by me next week. Come sit by me and I'll take you to lunch or something like that. Invite some folk. Come back next week. Next week, me and Jesse are going to be teaching together. Come on, stand up on your feet. I want to pray over you today. It's been an honor to teach the Word of God to you. Just lift a hand to heaven right now if you're comfortable with that. I want to pray. Father, I pray over my brothers and my sisters. I thank you right now that you would make these people wise as serpents and harmless as doves, like Jesus said. We're going to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Lord, I thank you that you kill the pig and all of us. Help us control our soul. Watch what we post. Watch what we say. Watch what we do. Because, Lord, we only want to be a part of something that's positive and edifying and based in the Scriptures. Lord, bless these, your people. Lead God and direct them in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. And the church said, amen, amen.